Welcome to another episode of uh, Jay Leno's Garage. This is kind of a special episode because my 66 Ford 7 liter Galaxy finally finished. This is a car that we've been working on for quite a while. It's actually the third time we finished it. We've filmed it two or three times thinking we were done and then we encountered problems problems most people encounter in the real world. You know, you watch a lot of these shows where people restore cars and everything seems to go so smoothly from beginning to end. Well, we had a lot of problems with it. It's not major stuff, but interesting stuff that we'll tell you about. Um, I should probably tell you the story of this car. I've told this story before, but I don't think I've ever told it on the website. When I was 16 years old, I got my driver's license and uh, that was very important whatever car we bought. The car we had before this was a four-door 64 Galaxy 500 XL. Had the uh, 390, no, 352 my dad had in that one. And uh, my dad wasn't really a big engine guy. We usually went to the dealer and my dad would buy whatever car was on the floor of the show. Like, hey, give me that one, that one's good there. You know, and, and then we'd buy that. So we would go up to Shawsheen Motors in Andover, Massachusetts. I remember the salesman's name, Tom Lawrence. And we walked in and there were no Galaxies on the floor, just Fairlanes and Mustangs. My dad said, I want one of those little things. All right, let's go look at Chevy's. The guy said, why don't you order a car, Mr. Lano? I said, Dad, let's order a car. Well, how long is that going to take? Uh, four to six weeks, you know, have a brand new car. Blah, blah, blah. Said, Dad, let's order a car. Okay. So we ordered the Galaxy. I had to twist my dad's arm to get him to order the, to get the two-door. Wouldn't get a stick. We had to get the C6 automatic. But then I said to the guy, uh, I said, hey, Dad, can I pick the engine? I remember my mom said, oh, let the boy pick the engine. What difference does it make? Let the boy pick the engine. Well, I knew what I wanted. I wanted the 428 with the police pursuit package, you know, the whole deal. We got the muffler delete option, glass packs only. So I, I check all these boxes. Of course, my dad is oblivious to this. He's off looking at stuff. And here's what we want. And the salesman said, do you really want? Oh, yeah, that's what we want. Fine. So six weeks go by, whatever car comes in, we go to look, oh, my dad goes, it's beautiful, look at that maroon paint, and it's got bucket seats, and disc brakes up front, and so my dad gets in, he turns the key, and the thing goes, rah, rah, rah. my dad goes, there's a hole in the muffler, there's, there's a, it's a brand new car with a hole in the muffler, he screams, and the guy goes, oh no, Mr. Leno, you, you, you checked muffler delete, what are you talking about, why would I order muffler, oh no, right here, you wanted glass packs only, see, and then my dad looks at me now, he knows, <laughs> He knows he's been had. He goes, let's get the hell out of here. When you get in the car, you know, my dad puts it in gear and he's so mad, he nails it. The car goes, yeah, yeah. And it fishtails out of the dealership. My car goes, it's a rocket ship. It's a damn rocket ship. You made me buy a rocket. He's now screaming at me, right? So I go, well, well calm down. My mother's all, oh, my mom's all upset. So I said, dad, dad no, it's just got a little extra power. That's all. So my dad didn't speak to me for like a week. But then like three months later, I'm in my parents' room looking for something. And I see in my dad's dresser bureau there, he got a ticket for going 110. I nailed him at 110, so I knew he actually enjoyed the car and got a kick out of it. And then uh, I got to drive it occasionally, you know, proms and stuff like that. Yeah, it was a few years after that, I uh, got a little rambunctious with it and put it into a tree, and that was the end of it. We never bought a high-performance car. The next car we bought was a Buick Electra, which my mom liked because it had the velour interior. <laughs> and that was nothing, a big four-door Electra, a big heavy tank. But this was the greatest car my dad ever bought. So. My goal was to try and find another one of these. And you know, they're hard to find because the seven liter was a one year model only. Uh, in 67, it was an option package. But in 66, to compete with sort of the Catalina, the two plus two, this was rather than a GTO or a Fairlane, this is a full size car with the big engine in it. And they just did it that one year. I finally found this one in Canada. And well, it was a, uh, it's been a project. We had to make a special cold air box. Let me show you that. Now, as you see, it beautifully matches the exterior of the car. Originally, we couldn't close the hood with the standard air cleaner on it. I didn't want to go to a scoop. You know, I'm not 16. I want a big scoop on the front of it. I wanted it to look stock. So we got these beautifully made little air cleaners that screwed right on the throttle bodies. But the trouble is, in the summer, there was so much heat under the engine, we were just sucking so much heat into the, into the car that it was literally stalling. I never realized the importance of a cold air box until we made this one. So using our 3D printer, we were able to design it on the computer, sketch it out, make it in plastic, fit it, paint it, so it looks totally stock and it works fantastic. You probably get an extra 20 horsepower or something with it. And it's not stalling because of the heat. Because what would happen was I would drive this thing in the summertime, I would just, I would stop at a light, I'd open the hood, massive 
amount of hot air would come out and the car would start again. So we realized we were just pulling too much heat under the hood. The first time we finished it, I didn't realize it had a 323 rear end. We put a six speed in it, now it's got a 411 rear end. And this Roush motor is putting out about 575 horse. Um, what else did we change? First we did the rear suspension with John, and then we went and did the front suspension as well. So now I have a car that really, really handles. It is so much fun to drive. I mean, just to drive a big car that handles and stops and goes fast is incredibly fun. Uh, we put the um, vintage air, air conditioning and heating in. You know, the great thing about the vintage air is you can, it's very small and compact. Well, here, let me show you. You see the compressor, God, the compressor is like the size of an alternator. And it fits right in under the dash. There's our Willwood uh, disc brake setup. To me, I don't think there's anything wrong with modifying a car if you make it safer and stop better. As you can see, the interior turned out almost exactly like my dad's car, except it's got a six-speed instead of the C6 automatic that my dad ordered. We were able to keep the original dashboard. We put a Ford Racing tack in since then. And then uh, we did the trunk all stock. That's what you call a trunk where a family of four can live comfortably. I want to thank Mike at Mike's Classic Car in uh, Blair, Nebraska. He's a big Ford Galaxy guy. He, he got us a lot, of the, a lot of the body pieces and stuff we needed for this car. So Mike, thanks a lot. It's Mike Patak, P-A-T-A-K. As I said, three separate times we filmed the finish of this car and then we found problems and we had to go back and do it again. Well, here, take a look, here's the video. If you've been following this website, you know my dad had one of these when I was a kid. And this is the original vintage burgundy color that my dad and I ordered. We'll update the suspension. So this would be a real hot rod when we're done. Body's on the frame now. It's not fully bolted down, but almost as bolted down. We got our Dynamat. This stuff is fantastic for heat and sound insulation. We put it in the roof. We put it everywhere. It really keeps the noise dampening down. It's a terrific product. We use it on all our cars here. We're getting rid of these. We want electric. My yeah. dad didn't want to spring for the electric windows, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the electric windows in. This is the original 428 uh, motor that the car came with. Put out about uh, three and a quarter horse. Yeah, somewhere like around there. Yeah, 340, something like that. But I live in a hilly area. <laughs> and I need that little extra mm, to get you over. So we sprung for the Roush crate motor. 427, almost 600 horsepower. These look like Webers with their throttle bodies. And we'll made it to a Tremec six-speed uh, transmission. You know, I like these Tremec gearboxes. We've got one in my uh, Dodge Challenger. It's fantastic. That one's a five-speed. This is a six-speed, and it's got the cool period-looking Hurst shifter. We got a really cool uh, twin-plate clutch in it, like we put in the Challenger. Right. Is this a McLeod? And yes, it's yeah. a McLeod clutch. Yeah, McLeod clutches are terrific. We use them and in everything. And a scatter shield. And we have a scatter shield as well. The nice thing is we can now concentrate on doing the. Uh, the bodywork and the interior, because our driveline is pretty much all set. Although we we're playing with the suspension, huh, Bernard? Yeah, we're going to try to do an improvement on the front suspension. Yeah. So that's the next step. We'll go to bigger brakes. Uh, we'll go to a we'll, little bigger wheel. We'll put discs on it all the way around. Discs all the way around. The car originally had discs in the front, drums in the back, and we're going to try a trick like we used on our Tornado. We're going to make a wheel that looks exactly like the stock hubcap. As you can see, work is progressing on my 66 Ford 7 liter. We got the motor in, we got the transmission in. We realize now the hood is not going to close, so we're going to talk to KNN about giving us some filters about half this size with the same amount of volume of air, obviously, and uh, lower it down. I don't want to put a hood scoop on it. I want the car to look stock. To me, that's my favorite thing. Keep it looking stock, but just do modern performance. We put rack and pinion steering in. Yeah, total control. We have our Willwood uh, disc brakes on here. We had to fabricate these brackets on our CNC. We have disc brakes all the way around now. We got them on the back as well, as you can see. The car originally had those big Ford drum brakes. Well, those aren't going to work. Our rear panel is in here. We've got our speakers, two speakers back here for the radio. Let's put it up in the air, show people where we are. We're getting very close. And we are working with the guys at Hotchkiss Suspension. Boy, they do amazing work. Uh, if you want to see what their suspension work is like, uh, look on the website here. Look for that 340 Barracuda. It not only stops and, and goes fast, it handles incredibly well, too, like a modern car. And that's what we're going to do here. As you can see, yeah. that is the next thing to happen. You're going to get a new, new trailer arm in the back. We're going right. to get the new sway bar, new even sway front bar and rear. Well. 
of our coil springs in already. We're getting there. It's slow but sure. As you can see, we got a lot of stuff hanging and wires yeah, exactly. hanging on emergency <laughs> brakes and yeah. all the other, but filled in all the holes, fixed all the rust. If you're someone under 30 years old or under 40 years old and all you drive is modern cars, you have no idea how badly these cars handled when they were stock. I mean, it was really, really dangerous. You know, you read about the early Hemi cars and the Mustangs and why the insurance rates are so high because guys were putting them into, into the woods all day long. They just, they had so much power, they just couldn't handle it. I mean, this is a wonderful thing to make a car safer and more fun. You know, if you have a family and you like to go to car shows and stuff and you put all the stuff in, you've now got a, a, a car that looks essentially stock, uh, but is much safer. Uh, much better handling, much better fuel braking. Tell us what you've done here. We've increased the front sway bar. The stock sway bar is actually over on the floor. It's only about a, a three-quarter inch solid bar. The three-quarter inch solid bar is upgraded for the seven liter. Right, right. And uh, so now we've gone to a one and three-eighths, 250 wall. It's about 500% stiffer. The bar is a hollow bar, so it looks massive. You know, when we brought this bar in today, everybody said, oh my gosh, you know, you're gonna put all that weight on there. But it's not that heavy compared to what it does. We've made our own brackets, upgraded the brackets because it puts a lot more pressure on the brackets. Right. So whenever you buy a sway bar, make sure if you're doing a, a, a much stiffer bar, always increase the bracket size and, and the bushings as well. And of course, well. you're increasing the whole rigidity of the chassis. Yes. I was stunned when we took the body off this and how wimpy the chassis looked. I mean, it's really just, it looks like a ladder. We've really done a lot to the rear of the car because of course, rear drive, lots of power, and really antiquated suspension. We've upgraded the panard rod. The original panard rod was a short arm, and as the axle goes up and down in its travel, you can see that it has, a, it, it would really pull, it would move the axle back and forth as it goes up and down, such short link. So we've lengthened the panard rod as far as we could, made it adjustable. Without this, it, there wouldn't be anything holding this axle from just going that way, going this way, All right. and this is the lateral link. Okay, and as you see, it's fully adjustable here. Are we gonna be using the stock springs? Stock springs for now. The they main are. thing is to get it on the road and see what you have. Changing. We've designed a one and a quarter hollow bar as well. It's a 156 wall, so thinner than the front. Uh, we've done our, our axle kit, right. bushings, uh, what we call our little dog bones. Right. We've um, attach those to our now solid trailing arms. You know, if I had had this on my dad's car, I wouldn't have put it around that tree in 1969. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And yeah, here's... I totally wiped out my dad's seven liter. <laughs> just wrapped it around a tree. So I'm going to test drive it. If, I, if you see this thing wrapped around a tree, that means that John's got more work to do. If not, I guess we're okay. This car originally had Ford disc brakes in the front and drum brakes in the back. When my dad bought it new, we had the car about, uh, I don't know, four or five months. And my dad, what are these disc brakes? Anyway, we took a trip to uh, Canada. And my dad put his foot on the brake, and the brake went right to the floor. So that was it. No more cars with disc brakes. Those things, are, they're not perfected. They're, they're no good. What we have here is our six-piston super light caliper with uh, opposed pistons, unlike a factory caliper that only has pistons on one side and right. an anvil on the right, other. so you just push against. This pushes on both this sides. This pushes on okay. both sides. Okay. Uh, we've wrapped that around a 13-inch rotor. This is a complete custom system that we've put on here. Bernard thought he'd probably be able to make a bracket, and you can see uh, very yeah, successfully. Yeah, we made the bracket on our uh, 3D printer. We designed it on the 3D printer. We made it in plastic, and then we made it later on the uh, CNC. From what you've learned here, Will other Galaxy owners be able to buy this package? That's one of the things we're working on. You guys were kind enough to provide the blueprints for the bracket you designed, and uh, we'll be working with that to hopefully put together a full line of packages. So many guys spend a fortune on going faster. They don't really think about stopping. You know, you think, well, I got stock brakes, they're fine. <laughs> they're really not fine. You don't realize how quickly you can stop. You know, take your old car, go out to 60, step on the brake and see how far you go. And then try this. Uh, the difference would literally save your life, wouldn't it? I Absolutely. Mean, between Absolutely. getting hit or hitting something. I mean, how many times in your life have you come this close to something? Well, now you get that much more of a margin built in. I always tell guys, if you're going to build a high-performance car, first build a high-performance brake system. Uh, we're waiting for mags now. American Mag is going to make us some wheels. I didn't want to go with 15s. They're too small. They wouldn't fit in here. 17s look kind of goofy on a vintage car. 16 is just about right. We've got the dashboard in. It's very exciting. I thought this was the coolest steering wheel when I was 16 years old, this simulated wood wheel for the Ford 7 liter. New clock, new AM-FM radio, 
AM FM was a big deal in 66 with the speaker front and back. You could move the thing and ooh, the sound would go front and back. Ooh, what's cooler than that? Everybody asks me, hey, who does the interior on your cars? We use a company called Stitch Corporation. They, they do a wonderful, wonderful job. And uh, well, let's bring Dan in. Dan, how you doing? Good, Jay. How Dan, are Brenda. You? Now you're what, vice president? What is your title? King of no, all? What is it? What is I'm it? king of all upholstery. He does a wonderful job. What we did, we took the original seats. Uh, leather was available back in the day, right? But it wasn't as high grade a leather as this. Look at the beautiful job they did in these seats, using the original. Uh, we used the original logo. We used the original grain leather yeah. for the car. We also uh, went and had this leather embossed. It, originally, it would only come in vinyl. Right. So um, that was a pretty. pretty and this is the original thing. pattern that the car would have had. Absolutely. Same thing with the rear seats here. The rear seats right here. It really looks factory, and it really actually looks better. No Ford ever left with this high grade of leather inside. No. So that's what we're kind of doing. We're upgrading the car a little bit. Well, as you can see, we're getting very, very close to finishing our uh, 66 Ford 7 liter, the Galaxy. Uh, just polishing out the paint now. Some of the interior is in. Right now, we're doing the uh, window switches. Got this panel here. We've got our Hurst shifter. Six speed is in. We've got to do the door panel. I mean, a lot of detail work, but we're getting there. Got the bumper on. Oh, we got to see this. We found these fantastic air cleaners here. They bolt right on, and we've still got plenty of clearance. I know we'll probably have a lot of little nitpicky things to do, but she should be running in, uh, oh, a couple of days. Well, we just fixed the leaky gas tank. Uh, this is a problem when you restore a car, obviously, all these little problems. We took it out last night, and a uh, little Viton seal, rubber seal that goes around the sending unit of the yep. gas tank. Yep. Uh, the gasket broke, so we put gas into the gas station and it kind of flooded out, so <laughs> came back here and fixed that. Now she's just about ready to go. We'll take it out for a test drive in a little bit. Uh, I want you to meet some of the other people that were responsible uh, for this car. You know John Hotchkiss, of course. He did the suspension for us. And uh, we still got some trouble with the front A-arms, don't we? Yeah. yeah, we can't get the wheel alignment the way we like yeah, to have it. So. Not exactly where it should be. Uh, John did the rears for us. And uh, I know, Bernard, you took it up to speed. How'd you handle OK? It, it felt like it was a little bit loose at the back end. Yeah, yeah. So I think John is going to make us a different sway bar for the okay, back. OK, make a little different sway bar. But it's certainly a lot better than it was. As Bernard told you, our suspension problem with the front A-arms? Yes, and when you asked Bernard a moment ago, uh, how does it handle? And I know Bernard is so picky when he said, OK, uh, I was very <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 glad. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, um, when you st start this project, you, know, you gave us a chassis. We, right. we, we hadn't even driven a Galaxy like this. So on, on paper, we said, well, this should be about the roll stiffness we right. need and, and, uh, and the rear trailing arms and, and uh, panhard rod and everything we did. But now we've driven it. Now the fun happens. Right, now we right. get behind the wheel, we decide, Hey, what kind of roll stiffness does it need? What alignment it's, specs can it's, we get? Right. It's got a lot of roll stiffness because the car really corners really flat. I mean, right, it, right. it doesn't roll over like it used to. Yeah. And, and so. with these tires, maybe the rear sway bar is a little too aggressive, so we can back down on the rear roll right. stiffness so we get really good neutral handling. And then now with the alignment, only getting about one degree of caster, you know, we can do some new A-arms that allows it to get maybe six or seven degrees of caster and a good negative camber yeah. curve. So we can take advantage of these tires and. And like we always talk about, a classic car with right. new modern suspension that really works. And although this is sort of the main piece of uh, the finished car, it's not really finished. We'll come back in a couple of weeks or maybe a month or so with the new suspension pieces and we'll take it out again and see how much better we do. So, John, thank you. I can't thank you enough. And all the uh, Ford Galaxy Fairline guys, uh, they say welcome aboard. Well, so, thank well, you. Hey, thank we're you. Glad we to be we here. love Mopar stuff too, but you can't forget us Ford guys. Okay, so we have our upper arms. We've done, and if you look at this, a stamped, a stock arm is a stamped piece. And back in the, the 60s or 50s when these were designed, uh, camber, caster, all the suspension geometry just wasn't, it just wasn't on people's minds because the tires were like, right. you know, just balloons. Nothing. Yeah, that's the fun thing. When these cars, when the, if the exit ramp said 45 and you were going 46, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's screeching and sliding. You went 45, or you just went right off the road. You know? Right. Well, there were no seat belts, and we're barely, you know. It was, anyway, so now we're we're taking the, an old car like this and bringing it to modern times, so new tires will work. What we've done, as you can see on this arm, the imagine that the stock arm, this ball joint to the where the mounts go to the uh, to the car, it's like this. This ball joint was in the middle, so right and left arm were the same. That means the geometry is, is not corrected. So we've done the long arm is in front, pulls the ball joint back, 
makes the, the spindle like this. You know, like a chopper forks where it's really far forward. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what gives you that stability. Right. Again, camber and caster. This is what the, you know. This is for the geometry guys. This is when you said guys in the fifties didn't know anything about geometry. I didn't know anything about geometry in the sixties, the seventies, eighties, and nineties, or even the two thousands. So explain to me what we what we can do well, here. Well, as I said before, when the, when the ball joint was in the center of this arm didn't have any caster, and therefore the stability that you were looking for just wasn't there. And explain what caster and camber is for people that are watching this. Caster is, is a, remember the, the chopper fork. So the far, when you, you know, when you're a kid or when you're riding a motorcycle and the farther out, the longer the wheelbase, the farther out the front wheel is, the more stable it is. And imagine a shopping cart, it's the whole opposite from that. Right. It's that caster wheel and it wobbles, you're driving down, the, right. pushing down the aisle of the market and the, the wheels are wiggling. That's the opposite of, that's, that's negative caster, right. the caster you don't want in a car. So positive caster, good stability, where we can get about four and a half, five degrees of, of positive caster, which is really in the sweet spot of what you want. And I think before Bernard said you were about zero to maybe one degree, right, right. just not enough. I think the rack and pinion needed three degrees. So we can get you right in the ballpark. And then camber, it's the radial tires need camber. So it's as the tire goes up, it leans in towards the engine. And if you see race cars, you always see that so much camber in there. Right. The suspension doesn't really move, so that when the car is going around the corner, it, it, it then uh, corners on that flat part of the tire. Same with this. That's what people do. They put right. radial tires on old cars without the geometry corrected suspension. Tires don't work very well. Right. So we make it so that that tire use all the contact patch. That's, that, right. that's so what you, happened with this one. Yeah, that's the great thing about it. We have modern tires and the brakes to match. So we have something that's. Uh, because this is a brand new crate engine, it's, it's greener certainly than the original engine was in there. And it stops, it handles, and it's a much safer vehicle. If you look at the level of workmanship on this. I mean, he didn't just do this for us. This is the level of workmanship he does for uh, all his pieces. And this is incredibly strong. This is not a lightweight piece by any means. Well, it? we know you're a seven liter engine and, right. and heavy foot. We don't want to make that's it right. some spindly that's right. piece. You know, sometimes, that's a, that's a, sometimes people do that, you know, it's nothing scarier than seeing some of these Mopars in the 60s that were six cylinder engines, the guys put Hemis in them, and they got the four lug nut, you know, <laughs> right. brake, brakes mm -hmm. from, from the six cylinder and the suspension from the six cylinder, and you're gonna kill yourself. The, the key to having a fun car is having a balanced package. And this, this can show really you some of the, the details. We've done uh, one and a quarter tube, it's about 120 wall, TIG welded everything, 3 16th plate here, premium ball joint, gusseted everywhere. So it's just super strong. We also did a 4130 chrome molly cross shaft. So this is a complete billet piece. There goes the cotter pin. Complete billet piece so that's super strong. Delwin, Delrin bushings so we have good articulation in this. Uh, it really it will just do the job so well. And then to match that upper arm, we've done our lower arm. And the, the lower arm on this car really, it, we said let's do some different design. So we did a, a eighth inch plate and uh, so put it together in a kind of a, almost an origami fashion where we said, okay, how do we build it so that the spring index is here, the shock is here, sway bar there, cutouts for the frame, uh, polyurethane bushings in this one for uh, damping, uh, good ball joints, and you can see the back end of it. So it was really a lot of fun to build. And we really want to get the Ford guys interested oh, yeah. in these parts. And look at the level of, look at the weld here. That's not going anywhere. Now, if, if you got Ford guys all across the country going to be clamoring for these, how do they get in touch with you? It's easy, just hotchkiss.net, H-O-T-C-H-K-I-S.net. And do you think you'll be producing these en masse pretty soon? We will, we will. We'll, uh, you're, you'll be the first, you'll be our test pilot. We're the test pilot. You give us double thumbs up and we'll go right. for it. That's right, so if you've got a Ford and you need these suspensions, this is really the way to go. It brings your car, you got the stock look and the stock appearance, but it really does bring it into the 21st century. It makes it handle like a modern car and a lot of fun to drive because this car has almost 600 horsepower now, way more than my dad ever had. Now it stops thanks to the Woolwood brakes and now it'll handle as well. Because you know, we had almost, we had finished this car. It just wasn't quite right. And that's really what happens with most guys. You think it's done, then you take it out on the road and you go, ah, we still got a little more to do. This car should have been done a while ago, but we had intake problems. We're gonna show you that in a minute, what we had there. But these suspension pieces are just, uh, just fantastic. Take a look at this. And look, if you have a hard time convincing your spouse, this is way more green, okay? What you're doing is taking a car that was built 60 years ago, or 50 years ago, or maybe 40 years ago, 
and you're recycling it. You're, you're, you're using what pieces are still available, you're adding new pieces, and you're not buying a new car and contributing to pollution and all those other things. John Hotchkiss uh, was showing us how to get it to handle and drive properly. Now we gotta get it to run properly. This is a problem we never anticipated. Uh, you might remember what we had under the hood here before. Maybe we had those very cool little air filters. We had no clearance here. We couldn't close the hood. So we sent away in these beautiful uh, machined mesh uh, air cleaners that go over the throttle bodies. Well, the problem we were having was we go down the road on any day above 70 degrees and the car would just, just stop. And we'd open the hood and it would run fine. And we realized we're sucking in so much air, so much hot air coming off this radiator, because this is a big motor, it's 511 cubic inch. It makes a lot of heat. There's not a lot of air moving under here because it's uh, pretty crammed in here. So it was all going right down the throttle bodies. And since, uh, like you said, it's fuel injection, it's not carbureted, so the, the fuel was not cooling as it went through. So the temperature was probably 250, 300 degrees under here, and the car would just stop with just so much hot air. You know, I always would see these guys that would move with their hood, and I always thought they did it just to kind of show off. But I realize now that's why they did it, to get cold air in there. So we had to get rid of our beautiful little machine pieces. Uh, Bernard and the guys designed this intake here, and then we're going to run a hose here. This piece here we made on the rapid prototype. It fits on there like that. And then we'll take our air from way over here in the corner by the grill. Now we have these, these uh, rubber pieces, this clay on here, to see what's hitting. Uh, this is the second version of this. The last one was hitting as well, wasn't it? Yeah, we had zero clearance against the hood. Right, right. So Brandon designed a new tray for underneath to lower the whole thing about almost an inch. If we had this car done, we were driving it, but it wasn't running properly. So now we got the 411s in it, we have the six speed. The last thing we need to do is make this on our prototype machine. We'll test it uh, with this one on it. We'll see how it runs. If it works good, then we will uh, do a finished one, either in carbon fiber or in uh, some kind of shiny uh, plastic or something, and see how that works out. But uh, we gotta get John's suspension on there now and see how that works. Now obviously, when you got 511 cubic inches, you need to keep it cool. So uh, we called our friend Don Johnson, the original Don Johnson. Don, come on in here, how you doing? Fine, yeah. Nice to see you. How are you? Don made this radiator for us. It's Be Cool, right? Be Cool, Inc. We're Be back cool, in Inc. Uh, Bay City, Michigan. It's amazing how many people underestimate the radiator. They just, they do everything else to the car, and then they just put a radiator in. I always say to them, did you boil it out? Did you clean it? No, that's fine. It's cool. Water went through it. Well, water might be going through it, but it could be all clogged up. And a new radiator is probably one thing you want to do, especially when you have a new motor and a new everything else. A new custom build. Any yes, size people yeah. want. Uh -huh. well, what we did is we gave them dimensions on how big we could go on the radiator, right. knowing how much horsepower we're having, so we made the radiator as big as we could fit in there. The dual electric fans on it, just right. fabulous to keep it cool. And how much capacity-wise bigger than stock would this be? 30%, 30, 30 more. Here in California, it gets pretty hot in the summertime. You're running air conditioning, you're running other accessories. Uh, a motor like this, you, you, you want to keep it keep it cool. It's a brand new motor and it'd be a shame to ruin an expensive high performance crate motor because you had some stupid stock little radiator in it. And radiators are not crazy expensive, I mean, in relationship to other things in the car. And these are all handmade, aren't they? They're all handmade. So if they want to get in touch with you, you got a website? Yeah, www.becool.com. It's uh, American made, right? Everything here. We're Absolutely. Not, not, you USA. don't have kids in China making them and sending them over here. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> just got kids in America making There's them. There's other people <laughs> do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, here's the poster right here I saw when I was 16 years old. It wasn't a poster, it was in, I think it was in Life magazine. And that was the big seven liter. Quickest quiet car, the quietest quick car. That was the big, uh, the big deal. Don't forget, this was part of Ford's whole total performance package. They just won Le Mans. I mean, it was a huge deal. Uh, big, fast, powerful cars. And uh, well, this is what I made my dad go down and buy. We'll take a right as you see the System 51 guys cleaned it up for us very nicely. Uh, we use a lot of their products here at the shop and they, they work great. Here we go. When I was in high school, there was nothing cooler than having that gauge pack. Because most cars back in the day 
just had these stupid idiot lights that let you know if you overheated or ready. You know, it was already too late by the time the light came on. So I always enjoy having those things. And the nice thing I like about those kind of gauges is they're mechanical, they're not electronic. So if your electrics go out, I still know what my real oil pressure is and temperature. And I always love this wheel. I know it's not real wood, but it looks like real wood. The speedometer only goes to 120. Hey, what are you gonna do? My dad wouldn't go for the air conditioning either. We put air conditioning in this one and use the factory original dash. You know, your mind plays funny tricks on you. I don't know whether it's the fact that uh, my old man and I bought this together and I had a lot of fun with this car as a kid. I still think this is one of the best looking Fords of all time. I just love this year, 66. 67 didn't care for, I had the big thing in the middle of the steering wheel. 62 was okay, 64 I didn't like. I, I just like this one. You know, I looked at the video, I realized I made a couple of mistakes. Well, I make a lot of mistakes in these videos, but I think I called uh, John Hotchkiss's uh, Challenger a CUDA. So I'm sorry about that. To all the Challenger fans, I apologize. It's a Challenger, not a Barracuda. It's amazing how physically imposing this car is on the road. It is so big compared to uh, modern cars. But back in the day, this was, oh, an average size family sedan. You know, you put six people in it, five people in it, no problem. Wish I could have gotten my old man to go for the four speed. As you can see, the car runs nice and cool. This car only had a temperature gauge. So we hooked up, the hot light comes on when the automatic fans come on. See, the fans just went off. So it means it's running cool enough. They don't need the fans. So the fan doesn't even come on until you hit 200 degrees. And 200 in a modern engine like this is nothing. My dad didn't get air conditioning because we lived in New England. And back, back then, air conditioning was like a $600 option, which on a $3,500 car is a lot of money. So I used to drive around, my buddy and I, with the windows rolled up and our sleeves rolled down on 100 degree days. And we go, hi, girls, want to ride? And girls go, do you have air conditioning? We go, yeah. They get in, they go, ah, it's 100 degrees in here. I go, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. But at least we got them in the car. And that's what's important. As I said, this is about the third time we've done a shoot to finish up on this car so if i repeat myself uh sorry about that these galaxies boy i mean they were fun cars but boy they rusted out cars in the 60s no galvanized steel used at all we bought ours in 66 by 68 there were bubbles on the hood i always love the look of a hard top pillarless coupe you know that's what the english call it pillarless coupe no post in the center my dad was an old guy when he got it about as old as I am now, actually. So consequently, all the young guys in the office thought he was cool because he had this, oh, 428, you know, blah, blah, blah. So suddenly he realized, oh, hey, I'm a cool guy, you know. And one of my favorite things about this car, I love this Ford racing tack. Instead of a red line, watch when he hits six grand, she turns yellow. But will it do a burnout? Suddenly, I'm back in high school. I thought my dad's car was fast at 345 horsepower. This thing, oh my God. You know, it's nice to build a motor, but I tell you, these crate engines today, they are so good, this motor just sings. I want to thank my friend Vince from the Seven Liter Club. Those guys are really helpful in helping me track down parts and stuff. Because uh, when you're dealing with cars like this, these are pretty rare, there aren't many of them. Most people don't even know what it is. As I said, it was only a one-year model and then it became an option package in 67 and then it kind of disappeared. It really makes me smile when I go around corners and it's saying, because it handles so well. Uh, John Hodgkins is really a genius. If you've got one of these old Fords, talk to him. We got to get him to make a kit for these things. But then again, I don't mind being the only guy out there that has one of these and handles as well. 
So, I could go either way. Anyway, that's it. After three or four false starts, I think the car is finally finished. I'm enjoying it now. I'm driving it as a regular everyday car. And boy, it's fantastic. Well, this time, I'm not gonna put it around a tree like I did the last time. Uh, we'll see you next week. Hope you like this kind of extended video we did this time. See you later.